There's a popular saying, you reap what you sow. But what if you plant a tiny seed of intelligence and it grows into something unexpected? Something similar happened with Jeffrey Hinton, often called the godfather of AI. He pioneered the field by developing algorithms that allow AI to learn from data. But now, suddenly, his voice, cautioning that the AI he helped create could one day pose risks we may not be prepared for. I can't afford to get it wrong. Why? Well, because they might take over. Take over from humanity. Yes, that's a possibility. Why would they I'm not say it will happen? Jeffrey Hinton is a British-Canadian cognitive psychologist and computer scientist, renowned for his work on artificial neural networks. Along with his colleagues, he significantly advanced the field of deep learning, a key component of modern AI systems. According to him, in the 1980s when he saw The Terminator, it didn't bother him that Skynet, the movie's world-destroying AI, was a neural net. He was pleased to see the technology portrayed as promising. Hinton spent years working on making neural networks bigger and smarter, trying out new ways to train them. He inspired students to believe in this tech. Then, about 10 years ago, neural networks suddenly got much better. With faster computers and lots of online data, they started doing incredible things like understanding speech, playing games, and even driving cars. This kicked off an AI revolution, leading to powerful systems like OpenAI's ChatGPT and Google's Bard. How AI struck him. One day with his intelligence, Jeffrey Hinton found himself increasingly concerned as he interacted with ChatGPT. One day, someone from Fox News wrote to him, asking for an interview about artificial intelligence. Hinton enjoys sending snarky single-sentence replies to emails. After receiving a lengthy note from a Canadian intelligence agency, he responded, Snowden is my hero. And he began experimenting with a few one-liners. Eventually, he wrote, Fox News is an oxymoron. Then, on a lark, he asked ChatGPT if it could explain his joke. The system told him his sentence implied that Fox News was fake news, and when he called attention to the space before Moron, it explained that Fox News was addictive, like the drug OxyContin. Hinton was astonished. This level of understanding is not what he was expecting. Hinton said, people say it's just glorified autocomplete. But then he explained later how it's not just autocomplete. Imagine you want to predict the next word in a sentence really well. To do that, you need to understand the context of what's being said, right? So when we train something to predict words effectively, we're actually making it understand the language better. Sure, it's like autocomplete, but it's much more than that. Hinton believes that big language models, like GPT used in OpenAI's chatbots, can grasp the meanings behind words and concepts. Why Jeffrey Hinton left Google after 10 years Jeffrey Hinton left his role at Google to talk openly about the risks associated with AI, despite his contributions to its development. He had been working part-time at Google for 10 years, aiding in AI advancement. However, he began to worry about the technology's negative impacts and his role in its progression. Hinton explained, I think it's easier to voice concerns if you leave the company first. I think it's easier to voice concerns if you leave the company first. In an interview with The New Yorker, he said a similar thing. I left so that I could talk about the dangers of AI without considering how this impacts Google. Google has acted very responsibly. Hinton said that while he had been happy with Google's stewardship of his technology, the launch of Microsoft's OpenAI-powered Bing search engine and Google's response might have set in motion a world with so much fake imagery and text that it will be impossible to stop saying that nobody will be able to tell what is true anymore. Even before leaving Google, Hinton had expressed apprehensions about AI's impact, highlighting its potential for both good and harm. Hinton's departure from Google isn't the first instance of an employee raising concerns about AI. The company fired an engineer who claimed an unreleased AI system had achieved consciousness, sparking controversy within the AI community. 
Last year in March, some tech leaders signed a letter urging AI labs to pause training on the most powerful systems due to the significant risks they pose to society. Hinton's concerns about artificial intelligence. Hinton was worried about the potential of AI to harm and began giving interviews in which he talked about the existential threat that the technology might pose to the human species. He said, I console myself with the normal excuse. If I hadn't done it, somebody else would have. Hinton shares these concerns, particularly about AI's potential to disrupt employment and blur the lines between truth and falsehood. He admitted to underestimating the speed of AI advancement, which now surpasses previous expectations. He emphasized the urgent need to address the negative consequences of AI, such as the development of lethal autonomous weapons. You've spoken out saying that AI could manipulate or possibly figure out a way to kill humans. H how could it kill humans? Well, eventually, if it gets to be much smarter than us, it'll be very good at manipulation because it will have learned that from us. And there are very few examples of a more intelligent thing being controlled by a less intelligent thing. And it knows how to program, so it'll figure out ways of getting around um, restrictions we put on it. It'll figure out ways of manipulating people to do what it wants. So what do we do? Do we just need to pull the plug on it right now? Do we need to put in far more restrictions and, and, and uh, backstops on this? What, how do we solve this problem? It's not clear to me that we can solve this problem. Um, I believe we should put a big effort into thinking about ways to solve the problem. I don't have a solution at present. I just want people to be aware that this is a really serious problem. Which he finds more immediate and alarming than the notion of AI-controlled robots. Understanding AI's intelligence. Is AI going to be a force for good or a potential danger? It's challenging to predict given the distinctive nature of AI technologies, particularly neural networks. Historically, there was a strong interest in developing computers that emulated the human brain. The current AI systems, such as the GPT models by OpenAI, somewhat resemble brains with their billions of artificial neurons. However, they significantly differ from biological brains. These AIs are hosted in expansive data centers requiring substantial electrical power. Their abilities range from performing certain tasks with exceptional skill to lacking basic understanding in author areas, and they operate based on user prompts. Unlike living beings, these systems do not possess consciousness. Some argue they have achieved the Turing test, a benchmark proposed by Alan Turing which posits that a computer that can imitate human conversation convincingly might be considered to think. So, is digital intelligence taking over biological intelligence? Brains can't exchange information really fast, and these digital intelligences can. I can have one model running on 10,000 different bits of hardware. It's got the same connection strengths in every copy of the model on the different hardware. All the different agents running on the different hardware can all learn from different bits of data. Hinton believes that artificial intelligence might outdo human intelligence. He thinks exploring AI can help us understand how our brains work, but he's realized AI could be stronger in some ways. According to him, when people die, their knowledge goes with them because we're biological. AI, on the other hand, is digital meaning it can make copies of itself and share what it learns with all those copies instantly. Imagine if, when one person learns something, everyone else knows it immediately. That's how AI can quickly know a lot more than any one person. Hinton feels we need to be careful about AI possibly overtaking human intelligence because of this. What should we do now, according to him? Well, concerns surrounding the improper use of AI have already become a reality. Fake images of Pope Francis in a white puffer jacket made the rounds online a few weeks ago, and deep fake visuals showing China invading Taiwan and banks failing under President Joe Biden if he is re-elected were published by the Republican National Committee last week. So to tackle the existential threats posed by AI, Hinton proposes a collaborative effort involving tech companies, governments, and international bodies. Just as nuclear disarmament requires global cooperation, safeguarding against AI's potential, takeover demands, united action.
It's not clear to me that we can solve this problem. Um, I believe we should put a big effort into thinking about ways to solve the problem. I don't have a solution at present. I just want people to be aware that this is a really serious problem and we need to be thinking about it very hard. I don't think we can stop the progress. I didn't sign the petition saying we should stop working on AI because if people in America stop, people in China wouldn't. It's very hard to verify whether people are doing it. Well, what do you guys think? Do you think big tech companies with their focus on profits and influence will be open to embracing Jeffrey Hinton's concept? Share your perspective in the comments below. Check out these videos on your screen for more interesting and AI-related content.